when it comes to street photography, the pocketable yet highly capable OM system TUF TG7 is currently my favorite camera. In today's expert guide, I will share my best practices and how to set it up to get the shot on the streets, even under tricky circumstances. My name is Thomas Eisel. I'm a professional photographer from Vienna, Austria. Welcome to the streets of Vienna, or to be more precise, welcome to the parks of Vienna, because that's where I'm recording this intro. Anyway, before we get started with how to work with the TG7 and how to set it up, I'd like to outline the three reasons why I really like the TG7 for street photography. Reason number one is that it is so unobtrusive. This camera, especially the red version, looks like a camera that the tourist would bring on vacation. It looks like a camera that, well, not a serious photographer would use. And that is great. People don't really notice me taking photos with the camera. And if they do, they don't really care because they assume I'm just taking some holiday snaps of stuff in the background and actually not of the person in the frame themselves. So that's one thing. The second thing I really like is the focal length range of the built-in zoom lens. In 35 millimeter equivalents, it's about 25 to 100 millimeters. And that is exactly the range that I use for street photography. So mostly I'm a wide angle guy, but there are situations where a tele lens can be useful, moderate tele at least, to get the shot. Well, you cannot get that close under all circumstances, right? Anyway, if I would bring a bigger camera, instead of the TG7, I would need at least three prime lenses to cover the same focal length range. And three prime lenses means a camera bag. And the camera bag means, well, more effort. And it is also way more noticeable that I'm actually a photographer. A zoom lens, well, that would be possible as well with a bigger camera, but those are just so big that you draw just too much attention and it's not fun at all for street photography, in my opinion. So that's a huge bonus for the TG7 right there. And the third aspect that I really, really like about the TG7 is often overlooked. It is the exposure program of the TG7. So what's the exposure program? That's basically the program mode combined with ISO automatic. The TG7 uses two very sophisticated control curves actually that are so good at setting the exposure parameters that I end up often just leaving everything to auto, letting the camera do its thing and I'm just using the exposure compensation via the control dial on top from time to time. But more on that later. So all in all, the TG7 is just fun to use. It helps me to get shots way easier than with bigger cameras. So yeah, that's another plus point. Now it's about time to get started. Before we can capture the first street photo with the TG7, we have to change a few basic settings. The first recommendation is to turn image review off. Because as soon as you take the shot, the camera will show you the image you've just captured. But when you want to quickly take another shot of the scene because something changed and it looks even better than before, well, image review will prohibit you from doing so because by the time you are back to regular live view, ready to take the second shot, well, it's most likely already too late. So turn it off, you don't really need it for street photography. The second thing I also recommend turning off is the shutter sound. So the camera has some funny shutter simulation sound effects built in because by default the camera is almost inaudible which is great. We want our camera to be inaudible. So turn off all beep sounds, all shutter sounds. That's just way better for street photography. The third recommendation has to do with the AF illuminator, which should also be turned off. Under certain circumstances, the camera will use the built-in LED to illuminate the scene to give you a bit faster autofocus. Unless it's completely 
dark, you don't really need it and the TG7 will get the AF right anyway. So the only thing you do is you're gonna flash a light in your subject's face, the subject's gonna move and you are most likely not gonna get the shot. So turn the AF illuminator off. Last but not least, it's a bit of a creative choice, but I personally would also recommend turning off the built-in flash unless you are going for this very specific in-your-face flash look that some photographers like when doing street photography. Because once the flash fires, people will notice. The scene will change and your chances of getting another shot with a slightly different composition are greatly diminished. So I recommend turning the flash off. And before we move on, I'm gonna show you how to change all these settings on the TG7. Let's turn image review off. Go to the menu, navigate to the spanner and there you find image review. Just select this one by pressing OK and set it to off. Done. Next, let's turn the beeping sounds off. But let me demonstrate how they sound first. This is the AF beep and this is the fun shutter sound. We don't need any of those. So let's go to the menu. There, navigate to the cogwheel. Select submenu B and there you find this sound symbol. It looks exactly the same on all Olympus and OM system cameras. Just turn the volume down to zero and that's it. Last but not least, how to turn off the built-in flash. That's very easy. Just go to the arrow pad and press the flash symbol there. So it's on the right hand side and you get the flash sub menu, direct access. And there you just go to flash off and that's it. Flash is off as you can see and we are good to go. So while I'm moving to the next location, I'd like to talk about exposure in street photography. Because actually, it is not that easy. Street photography is a very demanding genre because you have to quickly adapt to the exposure situation and to the photographic situation in general. But if you think about it, it is maybe easier than it looks at first. Because there are basically two situations that you are going to encounter in street photography. And that is first, the still subject and second, the moving subject. And here is how to set the TG7 up to deal with both situations effortlessly. When capturing still subjects, you are mostly concerned with one thing and that is getting the best image quality. You don't really have to care about motion blur. So and the great thing is that you only have to set two settings on the TG7 to get the best image quality for still subjects. It's quite surprising how easy it is actually. Set the camera to P mode, so program mode, and set it to ISO auto. Because then the camera will utilize two exposure control curves to set the correct exposure parameters. It will take into account the amount of stabilization that you get from the image stabilizer. It will also take into account the imaging performance that the camera is able to deliver in terms of ISO performance. And last but not least, it will also take into account the set focal length. I cannot go into too much detail how all of this works. You can find it in my OM System TG7 Expert Guide, link down below in the description. But really, I want to emphasize, it is quite amazing and it works astoundingly well. So let me do just that. I'm gonna set the TG7 to program and I'm gonna get the shot right behind me.
just like that. Three perspectives and I'm done. So setting everything up to capture still subjects and still scenes is pretty easy. But what about moving subjects? Well, the good news is it is almost as easy. I don't recommend switching to aperture priority. I don't recommend setting the ISO sensitivity manually. No, you don't have to do that with the TG7 because it is really good at figuring out the right settings. But you have to tell the camera the minimum shutter speed you need to capture a moving subject. And in order to do so, just go to the menu and set the lowest shutter speed setting. Here is how to do that. Press the menu button and go to the cogwheel menu. There, go down to C and you're gonna find the menu option called ISO Auto Set. Access this one. The second option is called lowest shutter speed setting. By default, it should be set to auto. By pressing the right arrow key, you're gonna access this submenu and there you can set a default lowest shutter speed setting. As we want to freeze motion, we want this to be fast. So 1, 250 for example. Half pressing the shutter after pressing OK will bring us back to shooting and we are good to go. On a side note, in the same menu, you can find the upper limit default setting. This will set the ISO range the camera is permitted to use. I recommend setting ISO 6400 as an upper limit, but don't hesitate to raise this limit higher if the situation demands. By setting the lowest shutter speed limit, we have just forced the TG7 to maintain this shutter speed as long as possible under all circumstances. The camera will just raise the ISO to maintain this shutter speed, but it will also take care that if there is a lot of light, it will set the best aperture ISO combination to give you the best possible image quality. So it is really that easy. Again, if you encounter that the camera is overexposing or underexposing because of a backlit situation, just utilize the tiny control dial on top and set an exposure compensation from minus two to plus two EV. That's all. And with these settings, you are super fast and you will get the shot in the streets all the time without worrying about exposure settings at all. Conserving battery life is very important when shooting street photography. Otherwise, you have to bring a ton of spare batteries. And here is the trick how to do that with the TG7, which has excellent battery life, by the way. Access the menu, cogwheel, H, and there you find the sleep setting. Set this one to one minute. Thanks to the TruePic 8 processor, the TG7 powers up almost instantaneously when set to sleep mode. Let me demonstrate that. Just wait a second until the TG7 goes to sleep mode. Now the camera is in sleep mode. Let me show you one thing. The orange lamp on top indicates that the camera is in sleep mode. If you don't operate any camera controls, the camera will eventually turn off. So always check the orange light on top. And here is how fast the camera is able to wake up when in sleep mode. Half pressing now and it's ready to shoot. So thanks to this quick boot up time, you don't have to worry about missing a shot. But you will save a lot of battery power when setting the sleep mode to one minute. I definitely recommend that. So let's talk a bit about the TG7's autofocus system for street photography. I personally love to use the TG7's high precision contrast detection system. I can get 99% of all the shots. Let me show you in the studio how to set it up 
and how to work with it. To set up the autofocus of the TG7, go to the menu, camera one. There you find AF area. Select this one by pressing OK and you get three options. The first one is all AF targets, single AF target and tracking. We're gonna stick with the first two for street photography. Let's try all AF targets first. When set to all, the TG7 will pick one of 25 autofocus targets positioned in the center of the frame. Let me show you that. In this situation, it's gonna pick the center one. Let's bring the hand in there and you can see that it is utilizing different AF targets. That can be really useful if you want the camera to quickly grab focus on a subject placed in the center and the exact placement of the target is not that important. I personally, however, utilize another AF area setting and that's the single setting. The single setting allows you to pick one of the 25 center autofocus points. Let's leave it to the middle one for now. There we go. If you want to select a different autofocus point mid-shooting, just press and hold the OK button until this grid comes up and then utilize the arrow pad to select one of the 25 points. Quick and easy. So what about using manual focus for street photography with the TG7? Good news, you can definitely do that. And the TG7 has quite an impressive feature set to support that. For example, you can enable focus peaking and also magnify. Well, the latter, I don't really recommend using that, but focus peaking is great. I'm gonna show you in the studio how to set it up. Let's configure the manual focus of the TG7. Pressing the menu button brings up our camera menu. There, we gonna navigate to the cogwheel. Menu A has the MF Assist option. By pressing OK, we can access the manual focus assist features that we want to utilize. As I said previously, we just gonna use peaking. So let's turn this on. By default, focus peaking is set to white. I personally prefer red. So in the submenu B, we find peaking color. I already set that to red. I'm just gonna show you other available options. So yellow is also there, white, black, and red. So I'm gonna go with red. Now that we've configured manual focus, we just have to enable it. And here is how to do that. Press OK to bring up the live control menu. There, navigate to the focusing options. Now it's set to autofocus. We're gonna utilize the arrow pad and set it to manual focus. We can now utilize the arrow pad up and down to focus the camera, but we can also utilize the control dial on top to focus the TG7. That works really well in practice. So now that we've configured the focus peaking on the TG7, let me show you how to set the camera to a predetermined focusing distance. In this case, I'm gonna use this lamp pole as a reference point. It is roughly one and a half meters away. And let's assume I want to photograph subjects at one and a half meters away. So all I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna utilize the arrow pad and set the focus so that the lamp pole is perfectly in focus, which is the case right now. I can go on and take street photos at exactly this distance. And thanks to the depth of field, the TG7 will produce even wide open. I'm gonna get the shot quickly and efficiently. You should definitely try this one out. This is an excellent way of getting great street photos at a predetermined shooting distance.
Before I wrap up today's video and enjoy my cup of Viennese coffee here in the middle of Vienna, I'd like to share two more tips with you. Tip number one, utilize the two custom setting slots of the TG7 C1 and C2. You can store all camera settings to either one of those and quickly access it when shooting. It's super convenient, especially for street photography when time is of the essence to get the shot. Quick and dirty, how to utilize custom one and custom two on the TG7. It's pretty easy, but before I show you that, you have to keep in mind that C1 and C2 really save every camera setting. Starting from the autofocus point to picture mode, really everything. So it is critical to set everything up exactly the way you want it first and then access menu, go to camera one, reset assign custom modes and there you can set custom mode C1 with the current shooting settings and custom mode C2 respectively. So that's it. And once you've got that, you can just bring up C1 or C2 and quickly recall those settings. Pretty easy, yes, very powerful indeed. The second tip is to use the picture modes and art filters built into the TG7. Those are really great and an easy way to give your street photography project a unique look. And if you don't like it, you can always go back to your normal edits as long as you capture RAW plus JPEG. Quite powerful feature, often overlooked, definitely try those, I can really recommend it. So before I wrap up this video, I'd like to highlight my OM system tough TG7 expert guide. You can download it via the link down in the description and in the first comment. I really added a lot of information that you cannot find anywhere else to truly unlock the full potential of the amazing TG7. So thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel and following me on other social media. See you next time.